<laughs> okay, so action potentials. Before we go into them, please do this learning check, review your graded potentials, pause the video. Um, we need to know about graded potentials in order to talk about how action potentials will be generated. So the generation of the action potential, we are going to be looking at what channels are open or closed, just like we did before. But now in addition to ligand gated ion channels, we're gonna eventually, we're gonna bring in voltage gated. Voltage gated ion channels are what allow action potentials to happen. So this, recall the neuron at rest is at minus 70. So this is our um, potential, potential meter, potentiometer or voltmeter. We're measuring the difference in the voltage between outside and inside the cell. At rest, these channels are closed um, and we're maintaining about minus 70 for, for neurons, a little bit lower for muscle cells. When we have a stimulus depolarize the membrane, that's a graded potential um, or hyperpolarize the membrane. In this video, we'll be talking about graded depolarization specifically because those are the ones that are going to get us closer to an action potential. Action potentials are when voltage gated ion channels open at the axon hillock. They're beginning there. So we've got the opening. Uh, let's, let's do a graded, a graded depolarization. Let's start with that. That could be anywhere on the cell. If we reach sufficient depolarization at the axon hillock, we are going to have the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. Prior to this, we were opening chemically-gated, ligand-gated. The opening of voltage-gated sodium channels is going to do what? It's going to cause sodium to flow into the cell, down its electrochemical gradient, very strong drive. That's going to do what? Cause more, cause more depolarization. That's going to do what? Open more voltage-gated sodium channels, more sodium in, depolarization. This is a positive feedback loop. Action potentials are all or nothing, just like other systems that are mediated by positive feedback loops. So you don't have a baby halfway, you don't have an action potential halfway, it's all or nothing. And that's because of that positive feedback that allows this to continue occurring until it's occurred, until it's done. Um, we'll talk about how that happens. This here, so this is step one down here, those channels, um, first opening, and then step two is this, basically this whole thing here happened over and over again, is step two. So I want to draw this out on a graph. So here is a neuron. Um, we're going to be focusing in at one little area again, the axon hillock. And when we draw these changes in membrane potential, we're going to be just looking at this one piece. We're not looking across an axon. We'll get to that later, how we get action potentials to travel down the axon. I'm going to draw you a graph of membrane potential in millivolts over time in milliseconds. So this is at one little spot here. I'm gonna have some numbers pop up on the left. Um, this is membrane potential, right? So minus 70 is about a neuron at rest. We'll actually start with that just at rest here. And then plus 30 is about as high as we get. That means it's more positive inside the cell than outside the cell. Zero would be no difference between inside and outside the cell. N not how it ever it is at rest. So we're gonna be at rest. You already know what it looks like to have depolarization occur. We drew this out in the previous video. 
depolarization looks like this. We're getting less negative. So that's gonna occur due to the um, some sort of stimulus. Let's have actually add the stimulus in here. So let's say stimulus is right there. It's gonna cause depolarization. If that stimulus is large enough and depolarization is enough, enough means threshold. So threshold is right about, right about here. Threshold is the level at which there will be an action potential. Um, I'm going to draw this in a different color here. So here's threshold. Ideally a straight line. If we've reached threshold with sufficient, a sufficient stimulus, enough sodium flows in, now we've got an action potential. Rapid depolarization due to what? This is due to the opening. I guess it first happens, the opening, it's first gonna occur right here, start to open, further and further out opening. So all along there is gonna be the opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. Just like I drew in the previous picture, opening of them causes more to open. Open, 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 until we get to about plus 30, in which case we're gonna max out those voltage-gated sodium channels are going to inactivate, not close, but inactivate. They have two different ways of being regulated. The other thing that's gonna happen up here is the voltage-gated potassium channels are going to open. Potassium is going to flow which way? is gonna flow out. There's more of it inside the cell. And also now we're positive inside the cell. So it's a drive for it to go out. It's going to pass and flowing out. That negative stuff is leaving the cell, making the cell more negative. Negative, 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 negative. It's actually going to undershoot, go lower than rest, and then come back up. This is important for reactivating the voltage gated sodium channels down here. So I'll put that right here. Reactivate and are ready to be stimulated again. So this is the action potential. If you can know what types of channels open, two main types of voltage gated channels and the names of these two processes. So the voltage gated sodium channels, sodium flowing in. So that's depolarization, just like it was in the last video. Potassium flowing in is repolarization. This here is rest. This here is depolarization but not in a part of the action potential yet. This down here is actually called hyperpolarization because we're going below rest. Um, and then we go back to rest.